So you've been spending a lot of time vlogging with your fancy new iPhone or your new Samsung Galaxy phone, or in my case, the Pixel, but you want to step your game up. I think, I am, actually, I'm pretty sure, I have the camera right here that's going to help you step your game up for vlogging. Hands on Tech is brought to you from LastPass Studios. Using the same password everywhere is a security nightmare waiting to happen. LastPass easily creates unique passwords for every site you visit. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Tech is brought to you by Hover. Visit hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Matt Pruitt, and this is Hands on Tech here on Twit TV. I hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. And right now, we are dealing with the the uh, tough, tough, interesting times of the pandemic. And it's, t- it's a little tough trying to work on your creativity during this time because of all of the shelter in place. And some of us have been wanting to step our game up with regards to our own personal vlogs. And, you know, we have our smartphones out there, the iPhone, the latest iPhone and the latest Samsung Galaxy phones. They're pretty daggum good when it comes to photography and video, but you can still do just a little bit better. And today I'd like to suggest and take a look at this unit that was sent to us from Sony, and that is the Sony ZV-1 or ZV-1, depending on where you live. This is their vloggers camera, and actually they sent over the whole vloggers kit, which includes the camera body and this interesting little uh, tripod uh, mount or grip or, yeah, tripod grip, let's call it that, tripod grip. This body is what you would call a point and shoot camera. This is not a DSLR or a a single lens reflex. This is not a mirrorless. This is a lot more compact, weighs roughly 12 ounces or so. Very, very small, about four to five inches in size or so. So this is something that you, you could literally just stick this in your pocket and carry it around as a vacation camera, if you will, something like that. But in addition to having the, the photo capability, the video capability is where Sony is wanting this particular body to shine. Let's talk a little bit about some of the hardware on this. You're going to get a flip out very screen, which is great because when you're vlogging, you'd like to be able to have a viewfinder where you can see how your framing is when you're walking around with the camera and talking into it. The audio on here, it has an additional um, port to mount a a microphone to it, just in case you have a shotgun mic. We've talked about previous uh, microphone options for vlogging here on Hands On Tech before, just in case you're trying to make your your audio sound a little bit better. The mic on here doesn't sound terribly bad. You can even get a wind muff to attach to the top of it to help break down some of the wind coming through, making a little bit of noise and rumble. And for the most part, Sony does a good job with that right out the box. In addition to uh, the Vera screen and the microphone options on here, you have a couple ports. You have a micro HDMI port. You also have a micro USB USB port on here. The USB port is used for charging the actual camera on here. Uh, the HDMI on here is great for plugging this into your computer just in case you feel like doing some live streaming. Yes, you can live stream with the ZV-1, but there are some catches. Uh, because you have this HDMI on here, it does offer what's called clean HDMI out. So you, when you're doing video on your computer, you won't have to deal with the overlays and menus and things like that that you would typically see on a camera when you connect it to your computer. This is very good from an image quality standpoint. Uh, I would recommend if you're going to do live streaming, live stream at 1080p. This camera is rated to shoot at 4K 30 frames per second, but I don't recommend that for live streaming. Just work with the 1080p. It'll look really, really good. Trust me on that. Now, um, so back to the whole vlogging thing on here. When When you're doing a vlog, there's a couple things you have to consider from a comfort and ease of use uh, with your with your equipment. You got to have good audio, which this does fairly well with it. You, you don't want your camera to be super duper heavy, which that knocks that out, too. 
but you want to be able to grip it and hold it a certain way so you can keep your framing just right. So if I was, if I was to just hold this in my hand and vlog with it like this, that's possible, but it's not necessarily a steady shot using it that way. It's a little bit more stable if you had some sort of grip like those old Gorilla Pods that, that you would see out there from the likes of Casey Neistat, or just use the grip that Sony offers with the Vloggers Kit. This is an additional 100 bucks or so. It is pretty plasticky from a, the feel of it, so it, it sort of feels a little bit cheap, but it's okay because it's just big enough and it's just strong enough to hold this really lightweight camera. It comes with a couple buttons on here to make it easy to quickly access the photo um, shutter and also the movie shutter on you so you can record your video. It even has a rocker to control the uh, focal length to give you a wider point of view or even more tighter point of view. So when you're dealing with that, you have that grip right there to make all of those options convenient while you're recording your video. Now, speaking of the wide and tight view, this camera has a really, really narrow frame. The frame is just a little bit too tight. Uh, for this type of uh, camera. If you're gonna vlog, you want something a little bit wider. This is what it should look like, something along these lines. But I have my arm extended way out. That's gonna make me a little bit tired after a while. I know I have massive shoulders, but this, this, this uh, frame size is just a little bit too tight. The sensor on it is a, a one inch sensor, which is not very big in comparison to standard cameras that are out there, but that's, pretty much twice the size of the image sensors that you find in your smartphones. So if you have a larger image sensor, you're going to get a little bit more data to process, more light to process and get a much more beautiful image and much more beautiful uh, video. But it still has a, a catch. The focal length is just too tight, in my opinion. Uh, it's rated to say 24 to 70 millimeters. The tightest is 70 millimeters. And it's not necessarily 70 mil millimeters, but it is still a little bit tight. The wide side of it is 24. 24 millimeters is fairly wide when you look at it on a full frame camera. But on this tiny sensor, it's not quite wide enough. Now, this perspective is the 4K UHD 30 frames per second versus the 1080p HD 120 frames per second. Now, I talked about just how tight the frame is on this thing with it being in the 1080p format. When you go to 4K, it's about a 1.3 crop on it, so it's even tighter. I'd rather just shoot in 1080p because you have a couple different options. You have the frame rate can be up to 120 frames per second, which is great if you're trying to do some super slow-mo footage uh, in, in part of your story. And also the the resolution just, it just flat out looks better. I know that sounds weird, but when you start thinking about a 20 megapixel, one inch sensor, there's, it, the math just works out a lot better for shooting at 1080p versus trying to cram all of that resolution into that tiny sensor for 4K. In addition to those uh, couple features with the video, Sony also offers you the option to shoot in log format, particularly S-Log2 and several other log formats for video. Now, what does that mean? The profile is, when you look at the video and then you shoot in, say, a log format, the profile is going to be really, really flat. It's not going to have a lot of contrast and a lot of boosted colors. It won't look very good. But when you pull it into your video editor for post-processing, you have so much more liberty to really push your post-processing, push those colors and push that color temperature and push the details and sharpness and things like that to make the, the video really, really shine and make your face look really, really good in your vlog. And I enjoyed shooting in S-Log2 on this in a couple of sequences. It really does look good and it allowed me to have some fun inside of Premiere Pro playing around with the colors and things of that nature. I had a morning where I was just sort of dinking around a little bit and said, you know what, I'd like to just shoot a little random coffee scene. And I used the ZV-1 to shoot that coffee scene and I used S-Log2, 1080p, 120 frames per second. And I took a couple of instances within that video to slow down that footage. And when I slowed it down, the footage was still smooth because I had those additional frames in the video. 
and speed it right back up. And it was just, oh, it's just buttery smooth. In addition, I could add a input LUT to it. And I added a, a LUT to the video to make the colors just sort of warm up a little bit more. Played around with some of the adjustments that I've talked about on hands-off photography a couple of times, exposure, contrast, and saturation, things of that nature. And the video just popped. It looked so good. This episode of Hands on Tech is brought to you by Hover. Create a domain name that truly represents you. Hover has over 400 plus domain name extensions to choose from when building your brand online. Get free who is privacy location, a clean and easy to navigate user experience and UI, monthly sales on popular top level domains, and excellent tech support. Visit hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. That's hover.com slash twit for 10% off your domain extension for a full year. Shooting stills on the Sony ZV-1 is still pretty good with all of the intelligent auto modes. My only problem is if you're someone like me that likes to rely on the histogram, uh, the histogram is a little bit wonky. Here I'm trying to frame up a shot that's going to have a little bit of challenges. It's going to be a little bit dark in some of the shadows. Uh, and in the background, it's gonna be a bit, a bit blown out. The histogram is showing that my shot is going to be underexposed as everything is lined up to the left. But when I actually snap the shot, it turns out to be a lot brighter than I expected. So you have to keep that in mind too when it comes to the photography. What I like about this camera, again, the size of it is perfect for just being on to go and for people that are trying to just get started and, and, and step up their vlogging game. It's not an intimidating camera to look at. It's really, really comfortable to just sit down and play with it and get yourself used to the button layout. It's a little bit small for my taste because I have large hands, but this is definitely something that anybody could work with. Um, what I don't like, the menu system in here is still something for me to get used to because I've never really been a fan of the Sony menu system, but it is better than what it used to be. It's just a lot of buried settings inside of this thing. A lot of buried settings. Also, what I don't like is the actual quarter 20 thread where it's positioned on this camera for when it's time to mount that grip or mount a tripod to this camera. The, the, the quarter 20 thread is set off to the side a little bit. It's not totally in the center of the body. And that's a bit of the pain because if, if you put your tripod right there, it's gonna cover up the battery door. And that's a nuisance when your battery runs out and you need to change the battery. You have to take your tripod off just to get to the battery. Also, if you happen to run out of space on your SD card, you have to take the tripod off to get to your SD card because the SD card is right there with the battery. So Sony messed up on that. I don't know why they couldn't move it about one inch to the left on here. I, I, I just don't know that that bugs me a little bit. But keep that in mind with this camera. And I mentioned the battery door and, and the battery itself. But. The battery is another thing I don't like on this camera. The battery life on this camera is so bad. You're gonna get about mm, maybe an hour and a half, two hours max of just continuous shooting with this device. If you want to do video or do your photography, it just chews through the battery on here. I don't know why. Um, I didn't think it was that much processing going on this thing, but it, it, it just chews through the battery. It absolutely stinks from a battery life standpoint. So get yourself an additional battery or two, uh, just in case you're interested in this camera. If you want to use it as a live stream camera, I highly recommend finding yourself some sort of uh, uh, continuous power supply. There's a lot of different adapters out there available where you can plug in a dummy battery and set this up on your tripod somewhere and, uh, and, and just set up your own little live streaming studio. It's gonna give you a great image quality, but don't depend on the battery life on this thing. It's just not there. All right, so that is my take on the Sony ZV-1. I appreciate them sending this over to us to check out and share our insights with, with you as Twit listeners. This thing is pretty nice. Uh, overall, I, I dig it. It's This is pretty nice. I could find some use cases with it. It's not necessarily gonna be my go-to camera. Nope. Mm, it's going to be able to take some pretty good video. Yeah, really, really good video. Uh, and the, the photographs on it are going to look pretty good. I'll share a couple of uh, photographs on here because it did do fairly well on that. But yeah, this is something I would recommend if you're just trying to step your game up in the vloggers world, because that's who Sony is trying to 
Target at this particular time. At the time of recording this, you can get it for about 750 bucks. And if you want to add another hundred dollars or so, you can get it for 850 with the body and the additional grip to comes with this with the uh, ZV-1. That's going to do it for this week's episode of Hands on Tech. Thanks so much for all the continued support. Make sure you're watching my other show, Hands on Photography, because I like to talk about cameras and, and the photography skills and post processing and all of that stuff on that show, too. That's twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash H-O-P for Hands on Photography. All right, folks, you all continue to be safe out there during these interesting times of this pandemic. I want to send a shout out to all of the firefighters and, and emergency support people that's trying to keep us safe during these time of wildfires here in Northern California. It really does mean a lot. And I thank you for your support. Now, you all be well and do well. And I'm still looking for justice for Brianna Taylor. Take care. Keep up with all the hottest tech news and gadgets. Visit twit.tv. There you'll be able to find and subscribe to all our tech shows. Thanks for watching. Hands on tech.